What is going on, guys? It is Tyson Brown here. Welcome to another podcast of Tyson's Fitness Tips. Now, today I've actually brought on one of my mindset coaches to really show you guys about who I work with and you know one of my very, very close friends too over in the States. I really enjoy uh, working with this guy and I learned from him through one of my other mentors named Ty Lopez. So we've... Um, We've been in contact for the last couple of months, and Mark's really helped me through some big things over the time, so I'd love to bring him on today and share with you guys how he can help you. So, Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you, Thank you very much, Tyson. Why don't you Pleasure tell to us be here. a little bit about yourself, Mark, and you know what you've done and kind of what you do at the moment? Yeah, sure. So, um, I grew up in Manchester, England, and I was overweight until I was about 13 years old, um, and when I was... Uh, you know, I just got sick of it being overweight. You know, I got um, I had people making fun of making fun of my weight. Um, I didn't like it. And one day, I, I got home from school, and my grandfather was actually telling my mom that he thought I was too fat, and that really bothered me because I was like, man, I get at school, people are making fun of me for being yeah. overweight, and I get home, and my own grandfather's making fun of me for being overweight. And he wasn't really making fun of me. He was just concerned that I was overweight <laughs> basically so anyway at 13 I was like that's it I'm gonna get in great shape I'm gonna figure it out so um I, I found a mentor I found a mentor there was this guy called Paul Gray who was in my high school class and he had like an eight pack at 13 years old he was a tall eight pack just looked like a stud so I, I went up to Paul and asked him like what do I do to get a six my exact words were Paul how do I get a six pack mate? And um, he says, I'll bring something in for you tomorrow, Mark. He sort of had pity on me. He was like, I'll bring something in for you tomorrow. Like, come and find me tomorrow. So the following day I went in and he, um, he brought in, true to his word, he brought in a little um, men's fitness pullout. It's like six weeks to six pack abs type of pullout with loads of exercises in. And he said, just do one of these exercises every night. Just do as many as you can every night and you'll get a six pack. So I was like, took it home and started doing them every night. I remember the first night I could only do two before getting in like two reps before getting cramp in my abs. But I just kept going back, kept at it. And then I asked my mom to buy me these fitness magazines. So my mom started buying me the fitness magazines and I started learning about nutrition and you know training. And I learned that water is good for you. And you should drink water. I didn't know that. I used to just drink um, soda or pop and fruit juice. That was it. I didn't drink anything else. So I forced myself for a little while to drink water, got into the habit. And then by the time I was 15, I was in great shape. Um, I went to university to study sports science and physiology. I was a rugby player myself. Um, After university, oh, I I lost my way a little bit and started. I was in amazing shape. I was doing fitness modeling. Um, I did men's fitness modeling for years in the UK, all types of different fitness modeling and um, personal training. And for just before personal training, I lost my way and started selling like um, performance enhancing drugs. I'd sell steroids, growth hormone, so fat, illegal fat burners, all, all types of stuff. I sort of went down the dark side. I went to the dark side for a few years, you know, with all that stuff. And then um, came out of it, was a health coach in England, traveled around the States. I was in London for a while, traveled around the States, learning from top health coaches. And um, when I was about 23, 24, I was working in um, this department store called Harrods, which is a real high-end department store in London with like super wealthy people go to, you know, multi-millionaires, billionaires. And I found myself with all these high net worth clients who needed help getting into physical shape, getting healthy. So I was helping them with nutrition consulting and everything else. And after a while, I realized, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these people, even though they're like super wealthy, they're really not happy with the life. Um, And I I saw that as a problem because I I was great friends with these people. As you know, as a personal trainer, you get to, you get to know people pretty well, your clients. And I wanted to help them even more. So I started going on executive coaching courses so that I could speak to them better and I could help um, change the habits more. And then um, eventually I decided to move out to Los Angeles and get a master's degree in um, positive psychology, 
which is all about the psychology of optimal human performance, you know, happiness, how to get into the zone, flow, just health confidence, motivation, it's how to be at your best mentally. Because my background was how to be in your best physically from my bachelor's degree in sports science and physiology. And then I, I wanted to get people at the best mentally too. So moved out to LA, um, got my master's degree under a, a guy called Dr. Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi. He's the author of a very famous book called Flow. And um, since then, I've been working with entrepreneurs all over the world to help them basically improve improve the health and mindset so they can make better decisions and make make more money. Wow. Sounds like you've been on a, a bit of a journey there, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. And 31 sorry. years old. <laughs> it's actually interesting that you said, um, you know, you went from being an overweight kid to going to be really health and fit and then you kind of, you know, you went back down through that slump again, that dark time and you've come back out of it and that that's a big thing that I think people need to realize that it's not, all, you haven't always just been like this healthy guy who's always looking after taking care of his body. Like every, we all go through, everyone goes through like periods of, where our lives completely change. And when they can see that, you know, when they can see where you've been, that you haven't always just been this fit and healthy guy, I think it's more relatable too, you know, like, because you know where, like, I'm sure with those times of the dark times, you've also neglected your health too, and it's, yeah. you know exactly how it feels. Yeah, um, I, I remember a time in London, actually, when I was a fitness model, I was coaching all these um, people, and my health was completely deteriorated it got to the point where I was spending four days a week in bed. I couldn't get out of bed four days a week. And um, that was a little bit crazy. That I didn't know what was wrong with me. It was a combination of um, like candida, I had a parasite, and um, I was just pushing my body too hard. And I, had, I was on a vegan diet, and my, my, body, my body was all right for a little bit. But after a year of it, it just went, <laughs> crashed. And um, between the candida, the flipping parasite, which wasn't like worms or anything, it was something called H. pylori bacter, which is this like tiny little like bacteria, I believe, that can um, it can cause stomach ulcers in people. Apparently, like half the world's population have this H. Yeah, yeah. pylori. For some people, it, it won't really bother them, and for others, it will cause stomach ulcers. For me, for me, I've, I think it was the combination of my vegan diet. And um, just pushing myself very hard physically and not getting enough rest and being what they call in the States GNC fit. I was full of supplements. I was full of supplements, but I wasn't really eating like organic, you know, super nutritious foods. Yeah, that, that left me really sick. And I had to completely turn around the way I ate, the way I looked after myself, um, uh, everything. I had to turn it all around to recover from that. So. Yeah, I think the seasons of life, right, and cycles, and sometimes we get a bit comfortable in a certain way of being, and the universe comes along and shakes us up. So you've got to like, whoa, grow some more or die. Yeah. <laughs> Your yep. choice. Pick what you want, you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> and so, obviously, like you said, Mark, you first of all, you started learning about how to be at your best physically, and then you've gone to being at your best mentally. So now you've got those two aspects where it blends in like the body and the mind. And even though they're not separate, but you have integrated them together, right? Yeah. So let's talk about that because obviously the mind, like, you know, training your body is one thing, but training the mind and making sure that you have a positive mindset is a completely other thing too. But a lot of people don't associate those two together. Mm -hmm. And so what do you feel like, like... What is more important that people, you think people should take care of first? Is it their mindset or is it their body? That's a really great question. Which one should you take care of first, your mindset or your body? Well, they're both completely interlinked, right? So if, you, if you're if you feeling stressed one day, if you're just feeling stressed out and then you go for a run or have a good workout, usually by the end of it, you feel a lot better. You feel a lot more relaxed, calm, and so on. Okay? Um also, if you're feeling really stressed and your body's feeling real tense, after having a nice meditation session, you can feel more relaxed physically as well all over. So it's completely in interrelated. Um, for me personally, I prefer to, if I'm going to choose whether to meditate or work out, okay, so meditation, say mind and work out more body, 
Um, almost the majority of the time, I'll pick meditation first. Yeah, I'll pick the meditation first and I'll work out later because I know that the meditation, that's not just going to affect, like, the meditation is going to affect everything. So the meditation is going to help me be um, more focused in my work day and get more done. It's going to be help me be more emotionally balanced. So when I'm with like my wife or friends or colleagues, I'm like way more chill and I'm not not getting into arguments. And um, it helps me. It, it helps me with everything. My workouts are better because I'm more focused. Um, whereas if I do the exercise, I might feel more relaxed, but I still might be snappy at people, you know, and not like totally focused with my work. So it's a tough question. It's a bit, it's a balance. You know, if, I'll, I'll give you an example. Today, I didn't meditate. I didn't meditate this morning. I haven't worked out or meditated today. I'm having an off day. Well, when I say off day, not taking it off voluntarily. I just got woke up late and got into the, got into things. And I've noticed that all my work tasks have taken way longer than they usually do. Like way longer than they usually do. I've been getting distracted, looking at my phone. Just getting distracted the whole day. And I think, I think it's because my mind's getting distracted. Everything's taking longer. And I'm, and I'm not getting the results in my body. I'm not getting the results in, um, or in my overall life either. So it's a tough one, man. Usually I put the mindset first, um, followed by the exercise. Okay, cool. And so I actually want to follow up on what you just said there because you haven't done either and you're finding yourself getting distracted. Yeah. So let's say we're in the same boat and we haven't taken care of our mindset or our body today. What are you going to do today? Like what, what's a piece of advice you can share? Okay, so um, what are you going to do like today to fix that? Yeah, I think what I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go for a run. I'm going to go for a run afterwards. And while I run, I'm just going to focus on my breath. I'm just going to put all my focus and attention on the air coming in and out of my nose while I'm running. Yep. Put all my focus. I'm going to do a meditative run, if you like. Meditating while I'm running. So you're going to integrate take it the two easy. together. Yeah, and I'm not going to go for a big, like a fast or anything. It's just going to be like nice, chill relax run and integrate the two together that's what i that's what i think i'm gonna do cool and guys like this is mark being you know as raw as possible he's showing us that even though he's learned about how to optimize you know how to get the best out of both there are days where we don't you know we aren't always at our best either but what he's done Mm -hmm. is what he's just shared with us a tip and tactic he's going to use to do that and so you can do the same type of thing so if you're someone who you know, if you haven't taken care of your health today, like your fitness, or you haven't taken care of your mindset, you can combine the two. Or you could even, it's not about doing so much every day, it's more about the consistency. So like, Mark, even if you sat down for five minutes of meditation, right? Five minutes yeah. is better than nothing. Even Absolutely. if you did five minutes of body weight exercises, if you don't have the time to go to the gym, it's about that consistency to get it in. Absolutely, 100% agree with you, yeah. Because yeah. it's easier... To do something like, you know, you tell yourself, that was kind of like me this morning with my cold shower. I was um, I was like, oh, it's starting to get cold. I don't really want to do it. I'm like, okay, I'll tell you what. This is what I said to myself. I'll tell you what, go in there and turn on the cold shower and you can do the normal time you'd do it. But if it's just too cold, you can just turn it off. I just want you to get a little bit cold. And as soon as I committed to it, as soon as I got in there, I didn't like, you know, I just did the whole time like I usually would. And it's just like, yeah. you just need that little bit of starting point and then you're good to go. Yeah, that's a great that's a great tip that works for pretty much everything. Um, I call them micro commitments. Yeah. If you make a little micro commitment to yourself, like oh, okay, I'll just I'll just go in the shower, and then if it's too cold, I jump right out. That's a micro commitment. Or it's like you know what, I want to go for a run, but I don't feel like it. I'll just run to the end of the block, and if I don't want to do any more, I'll come back in. Um, doing little micro commitments like that. Oh, like, I don't feel like meditating, but. Tell you what, I'll do one minute. I'll do 60 seconds of meditation. If I, if I don't want to do any more, I'll stop. They, that works. That works really well for anything. I actually like that tip. And I think, guys, that's a really good for you, for everyone to implement for their life. You know, set yourself little micro, like little micro things that aren't big. You know, they don't have to be 
such time consuming things and just say, okay, I'm just going to do this little thing. Like I'm just going to eat. You know what? If I'm going to have a fatty breakfast, I'm just going to choose something a little bit different. I'm just going to, you know what? Instead of getting the, um, let's say, bacon, eggs, toast, hollandaise sauce, all that stuff, I'm not going to have the hollandaise sauce. So I'm not going to have two pieces of toast. I'm going to have one piece of toast. Just those small little micro commitments and just changing it a little bit can really start off on the right track. Is that right, Mark? Absolutely. Absolutely. And then so, so let's say after... Let's say I want to incorporate mindfulness into my like in like my mindset. What is one thing that you would recommend starting with? Is it the meditation like you recommended earlier, or is there something else? It'd be, it'd be, it'd be meditation, I think. Um, yeah, I'm a huge fan of meditation. I started I started about six or seven years ago, and then when I say I started, I do like ten minutes every now and again in the morning and um you know i, I didn't know, didn't know if i was doing it right because my mind was all over the place while i was doing it and then um about maybe about three years ago i went to um a silent meditation retreat i thought since i haven't really been i haven't really been um on it like well, been consistent with it i thought well let me just throw myself in the deep end and i'll go to this 10-day silent meditation retreat and then I'll, I'll have to meditate, won't I, there, because it's got nothing else to do. <laughs> so, so I went, and uh, I did have to meditate, meditate like three, four hours a day. And um, we had, the first meditation we did was for an hour, and I'd never done an hour meditation before. And they were like, right, first one, we'll just do 60 minutes, 60 seconds, yeah, 60 minutes of uh, meditation. And we'll be doing that every day, three or four, five times a day. And I, I was like thinking, 60 minutes of meditation. I haven't done 20 minutes before. I've done 10, like 15 was like the most I'd ever done. And I was like, aren't they not going to break us in? Like do a little micro commitment, just, you know, break us in. And they're like, no, in the deep end. And my head was all over the place when I was doing the first one. At the end of it, um, I remember the, at the start, the beginning, um, I couldn't, I couldn't keep my focus without a thought distracting me more than, say, two seconds. But every two seconds, something distracted me. Um, by the end of the 10-day retreat, yeah. I remember that I got distracted twice in the whole one hour, and it must have been one second maximum. I was dis One or two seconds max I was distracted for. So about four seconds in the whole hour I was distracted. The rest I was completely focused. And my, my, my focus felt like a superpower. It was crazy. It honestly felt like I was a Marvel character or something. And I could just like <laughs> focus in. Um, an analogy I use, which will learn a lot of people who are into fitness would get this, is it's a bit like when, it's a bit like when you like really focus on your fitness for a while and you get way fitter than you've ever been before you can run everywhere and it's easy and you're way fitter than ever before it was like it was like that and um like but for the mind it's like whoa i'm way more focused than ever before like never been on this level and um i still didn't stick to it when i came off the retreat i still didn't stick to the meditation i just fell off so eventually i i got into um i use this headspace app to get into a habit and then um after a little bit of doing that, it got me the habit. After a bit, then I started. Um, I stopped using that and started going deeper and doing longer meditations and different styles. And um, yeah, it's been a it's been a habit. I do it every. I'll do it today for sure. I do it every day, and um, I just find it helps me be way happier, way less reactive. Time slows down. Um, get to enjoy life. Get focus is way easier. Get more things done take consistent action on things. So I recommend it to anyone. And um, if anyone's looking to start, I actually got a free um, download, and like, which is a four steps to meditate, the scientifically proven way, how to meditate. And this little ebook you can link to, Tyson. It's, oh yeah, um, cool. Yeah, it's Mark, it's my name, markdharma.com forward slash meditate. Yep. If you do markdharma.com forward slash meditate, you can download a free ebook which teaches you how to meditate the right way that was actually uh going to be my next question you know like about meditation but if people can go and download that that's excellent yep 
And that's, yeah, absolutely. And that's so that's the one thing. Okay, cool. That's um, I think that was really helpful. Like for people to think about. So far, we've got you know one thing for that for that mindset is the meditation, and then also making those micro commitments to just like you guys like you said like everyone talks about different types and time lengths and types of meditation, but simply starting off with just coming to wear your breath. Like where I'm sitting down right now, Mark, you're sitting down right now, or are you standing? I'm sitting down, unfortunately. I'm sitting down right now, and you can just, you know, focus on your breath for two or three minutes, and that's your micro commitment. It doesn't have to be for an hour, like Mark said. Like, an hour is a long time, for I think, for a lot of people, and you'd have to work yourself up to that. But, like, you know, it doesn't even have to be five minutes. It can be 30 seconds of breath, and then go from there and work your way up. But definitely, if you guys, like, guys, I meditate every day, um, mostly every day, probably, like, I'd say about, I'd be consistent out of about 30 days, or probably do about... 25 days it'll be a couple of days where i just be like no nah, i'm not doing it and the days that i don't do it i notice that i don't like it you know, i haven't done it and it's just so much more beneficial it's not woo woo it's not things like people still think i thought about that but it's very very beneficial and i really recommend you guys just give it a try so, well, so it's exercising your mind yeah it's like you exercise your body that's not woo woo yeah exactly. so what that's, about that's exercising true. your mind you just exercise your mind the same you know that's it. You're just training your mind. That's what it means. I actually heard someone relate to it like, you know, bicep curls. You, um, When you're meditating, every time you catch yourself with a thought and then you go back to your breathing, it's like building up the biceps. You, each one is a repetition, a repetition. So you can just think about it as reps and sets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you absolutely can. So we've covered how to start off with the mindset. Now let's talk about a little bit about the body. What mm-hmm. is the first thing? Because you, you, you work with a lot of high performers and... Um, what's usually the first thing you start to cover when it comes to the body? Is it nutrition or is it the exercise? Um, nutrition. Okay. Why nutrition? Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of easy wins there with the nutrition. Oh. And like you, you want to, uh, yeah, you know, I'll share them with you. There's like a lot of things that you can, little tweaks that you can do, which will make a big difference in the energy and performance of people. And um, you also want to have have the nutrition to... The nutrition fuels the the training, right? If someone's got really bad nutrition and going to training, then they might make the training more difficult. But if the if the nutrition's on point and going to training, it's easier. Um, so I usually start with the nutrition, and it's so simple and it's so obvious. Yet not many people do it. The first thing they always start with is water, making sure they're drinking enough water. That's it. Yeah. So a simple rule I like to use is, you know, find your body weight in pounds. So I'm about, I'm just over 200, 200 pounds. I'm like 220. I cut it in half, so that's 110. And then that's the amount of ounces, the minimum amount of ounces you must drink a day. So for me, the minimum amount is 110 ounces a day. So it's just your weight in pounds, cut it in half, turn that into ounces. That's a minimum amount to drink today. And I haven't hit my minimum amount because I left my water bottle at home. So I'm going to figure out how to fit that in after this call. Okay. Okay, so the first thing is water. Um, mm-hmm. Guys, if you're you know, over in Australia, that would be, you would do 30 mils for every kilo of body weight. So if you're 70 kilos and you times that by 30, um, that would be 2.1 liters that you'd be drinking a day minimum. And water is essential. Like the first thing you want to do when you wake up. Do you drink water as soon as you wake up, Mark? You know what? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. It's just like a, a habit I know I should do yeah. that I just haven't I haven't done, you know. Um, I do feel better. So I think I'm just going to leave the what. You know what? Sometimes I do. I'm just going to leave my water bottle next to my bed. So mm-hmm. when I wake up, I'll just drink it. Yep. I actually, yeah. um, I used to do that too. And one thing that I found really helps me is I actually brought a mini water bottle that was 250 mil, which is like, you know, the, the small little um, the one. Yeah. And so that was like my goal every morning to drink that really quickly. And so that's like, I'm like, yes, like I already knocked out a little bit. And it was kind of like a win. Oh, then I, just, yeah. I, like, I gave myself that small win for the day. I said, if I have that little bit of water in the morning, I know I've knocked it out. And so it's not like I've got to drink this much out of a water bottle. It's like, oh, well, I've emptied that. And that's good. That's my little morning water. Yeah, that's a good one. I can do that. Yeah, yeah I can do that. Little things like that. So let's say, okay, oh. that's an easy win. Let's start with water. What's uh, the second thing? So I, I take them through um, really, uh, so I mainly work with entrepreneurs, right? And I, I sort of take them through a seven-step 
process and it's uh, it's an easy acronym to remember it's awesome I oh, think nice. an awesome process right you're good with and your the, acronyms i've noticed you have a fair few yeah i just americans love acronyms <laughs> man they do and like british people we're not that into it but when i moved over here everything had an acronym everything has an acronym out here so then i was like all right well I can make acronyms too, so <laughs> I started doing it. Um, and uh, so awesome. A stands for air. Okay, air. So breathing, breathing techniques, breathing into your gut, breathing into your lower back, breathing deep, um, using different types of techniques like the Wim Hof breathing method. <laughs> if you know what that is, um, there's a lot of like different breathing methods from kundalini yoga and from my like ancient indian techniques of breathing i'm a big fan of all types of these breathing methods because they alkalize they alkalize the body they energize the body and they calm the mind so um what i found a simple explanation of that is what i found with most people overall um, is that they breathe in and out through the chest. They what are called chest breathers, or breathing in and out through the chest. And you'll ask them to breathe into your stomach, and they won't know how. It's just in and out through the chest. Now, by breathing in and out through your chest, you're actually turning on your um, sympathetic nervous system. It's so like your fight or flight nervous system. Okay, you stress, like you go one. Like when you have a coffee, go. That's what you're turning on. And uh, most people are just living in a constant state of fight or flight all the time. Whereas if you breathe into your stomach, in and out through your stomach, in and out through your nose, deep into your stomach, you're turning on your parasympathetic nervous system, which is more relaxed, more like calm, more like chill, you know, focused and relaxed. And you feel way better. You feel more calm. You can make better decisions because you're not stressed out. So um, I really teach that to entrepreneurs. One of the first things I do, because otherwise, well, they're just living the whole life in a stressful state. So that one thing will make a huge difference for the rest of their life. More relaxed, make better decisions. You make better decisions, you make more money. So that's what, why they're interested. So that's A. The second one is water, like we spoke about, the, the, the quantity of water, but also the quality making sure that you're drinking you know, high quality water, spring water, mountain water. Um, if you can't get that, making sure it's filtered water, not just the stuff straight out of the municipal tap, you know, the municipal water supply, it's clean, it's, it's high quality stuff. Um, so that's A-W-E, stands for eat. So that's a nutrition, making sure you're eating real food, food that's grown from the ground, um, swam in the seas or in the lakes and the rivers flown in the sky and walks on the earth and eating what it's supposed to eat, you know, not food products, um, which stuff made out of in a factory that's designed to be like food, but it's not human food. It's like on food products. So really making sure that you're eating real food, the one, the food that nature intended for us instead of the stuff that man have just made up to taste good with all types of flavorings, colorings and everything else. So that's E. So we've got all so far. An awesome. S is for sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Most people don't get enough sleep. You're always trying to get away with less sleep. It's like a thing. People want to be productive and sleep less. Um, but, you know, sleep is a huge part of recovery. I was listening to um, Michael Phelps the other day. Um, I was watching a YouTube. I like to watch high performers, right, and find out what they do. I was listening to Michael Phelps watching one of his YouTube videos and he was saying for five years, for five years straight, he went to bed before 10, 10 p.m. every night for five years. And he was saying that he did that because he knew like all, this, all of his sports scientists were telling him that his body would recover faster and he would recover more by getting to bed before 10. So he just made it a thing every night, got to bed before 10. And um, that's what I recommend to entrepreneurs and everyone else. If you get to bed before 10, your brain's going to be sharper. Your body's going to recover better. Your hormones, everything's going to work better. And um, so, so sleep is huge, huge, huge. And that, that's out of everything, out of the whole awesome acronym. 
sleep is the hardest to teach to entrepreneurs because they don't want to hear it. <laughs> they don't want to hear about the sleep. They're like, no, I've got to work more. Like, no. Well, sleep, that's big. Um, so on, A, W, A, Air, W, Water, E, S. And now we're on O, and that's outlook. So that's like your mindset. You know, are you living in a state of gratitude? Are you looking about what you've got and feeling good? Or are you focusing on what you don't have and feeling bad? You know, have you got um, a growth mindset? Are you are you seeing challenges that come in, up as your life as ways to grow and get better? Or have you got a victim mindset? And do you see challenges of coming up as things that are threatening you and, you know, are bad for you and so on? Another way of putting it is, are you, are you living as though... Um, life is happening to you or you're living as though life is happening for you you know so i I like to teach you know life is happening for you whatever's coming up it's for you to grow and it's for for your benefit so enjoy that so outlook huge especially in business like if you got a bad outlook in business and you're negative you're probably not going to be in business too long yeah entrepreneurs are optimistic You you can be too optimistic obviously um you can be um, blindly optimistic um however it's good to have well dr martin seligman one of the founders of positive psychology one of the greatest psychologists of our time is still alive to this day he said if there's one trait that you would wish on your child if there's one trait and one trait only if you can only pick one psychological trait for your child choose optimism because optimism is linked to more positive outcomes like happiness, um, lifespan, um, monetary, like how much money you'll make, um, illness, how, how little illness you have, how much health you have. All the pot, like it's linked to more positive outcomes for someone's life than any anything else. There's nothing else as powerful as optimism. So that's O for outlook could be optimism. That that's that's a big one. And then M is for movement so making sure you're moving every day you're doing something every day you know i even teach that during your work day you're moving you're always moving human beings we're hunter gatherers right we're traditionally we was hunter gatherers we're always on the move moving from one place to the next um hunting gathering playing always moving and our lifestyle today is not like that you know even my day today i've been like sat down the majority of the day I haven't got my office set up yet, so I've been like, get, I've been like sat at a coffee shop, and now I'm in a co-working space. And then I was sat on my bike, and now I'm dry. And then I was driving a bit, sat on my ass. And that's not how human beings are designed to be. We're designed to be moving all the time, and we feel best when we're moving all the time. We feel great. So um, M's for movement. You can have your focused exercise, and it's important for you just to move generally throughout throughout your day to day. And we've got one left. We've got one left, which is E. And it's not, it's only really relevant if you're an entrepreneur. Um, if you're not an entrepreneur, I'm sure you could still take some lessons. But E is for entrepreneurial skills. It's for focusing on the one thing that's going to move the needle in your business instead of all the busy work. And it's for leveraging your time, you know, hiring, hiring things out, hiring other people, getting other people to help rather than trying to do everything yourself and a few other things. So that's the awesome acronym. And that's, uh, they're like the seven awesome steps to take my clients through to get them to get them to about the best high performance. I love it. That is so cool. Yeah. And it's a very awesome acronym. So guys, um, Mark, that was a, like those, I think there are three really big things you've just shared with us that we can take action on right away. Like the first thing is the micro commitments, making small micro commitments to be in whatever we want to do. Like whether it be eating a little bit healthier, whether it be exercising, whether it be the meditation, whatever you can do is set yourself a little micro commitment and say, I'm just going to do this little thing and then I'm going to see how I go from there. Mm-hmm. The second thing we talked about was the meditation because you said mindset is a key important factor and uh, we can download that at markdharma.com forward slash meditation. And that's going to take Just us... Medi- I think it's meditate. Meditate, okay. Yeah. I'll, I will put the link in the show note, guys, okay. so we will be able to get that. Um, but like you said, you know, that mindset of just taking... Like I said, guys, that commits to that little micro commitment. So start with your meditation, 
for just two minutes, 30 seconds breaths, whatever you can do. And then the third thing we just went over was the acronym of awesome and how you can apply it to your life. So starting with the small wins, we want air, breathing in the stomach. Then we want the water, making sure that we're getting, uh, for the Australian listeners, it is um, getting your body weight in kilograms and times it by 30 mil. So if you're 70 kilos, it would be 2.1 liters. For everyone else who's in pounds, you would get your body weight in pounds. You would halve that and that's how many ounces you would want a day. Is that right? Yeah, yep. absolutely. And then E stands for eat. So we want to eat things that are like that are obviously natural in nature. You know, you want uh, things that swim in the ocean, things that walk on the ground, uh, plants, all those things that we know we should be eating every day. Uh, then we have sleep. Sleep is a huge thing. So many people think they can just stay up and watch uh, Netflix all night, Netflix and chill. But apparently, you're not going to get much more chill if you um, are staying up and wide all the time. Then we have our outlook. So we always want to make sure that we've got a positive outlook on life and we want that optimistic. We always want to make sure life's happening for us as opposed to against us or you know to us. And then the movement, we've always got to be moving. Even though I was sitting, I was sitting down talking to you earlier, I've now moved to my stand-up desk because I'm just always trying to change it up. And like I said, humans are meant to move. We are not designed to be sitting on our ass all day for eight to 12 yeah. hours. No way. And the last thing is, entrepreneurial skills so doing things are going to help you towards your business but I would actually I was trying to think of what we could change E2 but I really think entrepreneurial skills relate to so many things it's kind of like looking at like you know what's your return on investment what are Mm -hmm. all those little things that people can do in their normal everyday life that's still a skill Mm -hmm. like that and I think they're like the I really think they're the three big actionable things people can take away from today and I really appreciate you sharing those things with us. Absolutely, my pleasure. So before you go though, where can people find out more about you, Mark? Like, like if, if I want to perform my best, if I want to uh, improve my mindset and my health, like what, what are you doing at the moment? Where can we find you? Where can we get some tips off you? Um, you can go to my YouTube channel. It's... Um, Type in Mark Dharma in YouTube, you, I'm going to pop up right there. That's where I've got the majority of my content right now. Um, yeah, YouTube channel. You can go to my website, markdharma.com. Um, yeah, I'd say YouTube or website. Just type in Mark Dharma. I'm everywhere. You can follow me on Snapchat. You can follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Go to my YouTube. Whatever one you use the most, you can follow me on there. Um, and... You can. I'm actually coming out with a book called The Supercharged Entrepreneur, and then we're really going to build out all of the awesome steps and everything there. So, awesome. I'd say add me on add me on YouTube. Okay, YouTube's Subscribe the best place channel. for you yeah. at, for you at the moment. Um, yeah, guys, I'm going to have all the social media there. And Mark doesn't just talk about like I said entrepreneurial stuff. He talks about everything for you to be at your best, body, mind, spirit, and entrepreneurial business skills. He shares it all. So if you want to really stay off your game, if you really want to just kind of take your body to the next level and see what your potential is, you should be following Mark because this guy, like I'm telling you what, there's something about him that really I resonate with and I love following Mark all the time. Oh, thanks, Tyson. No worries. So that is the, um, appreciate you coming on again, Mark. Guys, that is another episode done and dusted. Go back and listen to this again because... That awesome acronym is going to take you a little bit to be able to pick, uh, to be able to remember. But I'm telling you what, if you implement that of those seven simple steps that are small wins, you're going to get the results you're after. So, guys, that's another episode. I will speak to you next time. Thank you for listening and have a great day. See you later.